Turnip 28 is a war game with a strong focus on its art and on its setting. According to the game's creator, Max Fitzgerald, Turnip 28 is about turnips. Beyond its nature as a tabletop game, Turnip 28 has done something for me that not a lot of other systems can do. If you please, bear with me as I tell a quick story. In 2015, I was part of a study on the New Zealand mangroves. What that entailed was me going waist deep into the mangrove mud and chucking around what's called a quadrat. I would go to where the quadrat landed and I would count everything it squared. Over the course of two weeks, for six hours a day, I would do this sampling 200 times. The New Zealand mangroves have a particular rancid smell because they entrap waste sediment from the surrounding farms. That particular habitat that I was studying was a literal wasteland. In 2021, I first read through version 15 of the Turnip 28 core rulebook. Turnip 28 is a system, but it is foremost a setting and an aesthetic. Reading through that version 15 rulebook, getting my first glimpse at the world of Turnip 28, I remembered the New Zealand mangroves. Through its art, its prose, and its mood, Turnip 28 had evoked that time of my life spent waist deep in the mud. I want to talk about this game today because of its unique approach to building itself up. I want to talk about it because it represents an approach to independent wargaming I did not know I wanted to see. I want to talk about Turnip 28 because the version 16 rulebook just dropped, and it is immaculate. This is not going to be my usual mechanics facing review. For now, what I'm going to do is use my modest platform to give Turnip 28 a little bit of shine. Because I really do feel that a lot of people will not believe the strength of what this game has to offer. Turnip 28 was born out of the Blanchetsu movement, which is a style of painting miniatures that draws from the gothic art of John Blanche. This style of painting involves a focus on the dark gothic aesthetic. There is often heavy model conversion and a focus on creating contrast through texture rather than color. Turnip 28 channels Blanchetsu not just through the models you use for the game proper, but through the concept art that serves as the visual foundation of its world. The frankly astonishing amount of investment in the current book's art assets helps to telegraph how the game wants you to imagine it. The art informs the tone and the mood of the setting. If you were to give into the modeling and conversion allure of Turnip 28, the art would then be a guide for your own creativity. Turnip 28 is an alternate history war game. So along with the stylings of Blanchetsu, it will also use the visual paraphernalia of the Napoleonic Wars. So that will mean there will be lots of bayonets and tricorn hats. Also lots of cavalry charges and running away from cavalry charges. Turnip 28 recontextualizes Napoleonics by ending the world around 1815 and then skipping ahead 1000 years. Technology has not progressed one iota, and everything is a horrible, muddy wasteland. On top of all of that, the world is now infested with absurd root vegetables that inspire cultish reverence in the people that feed on them. There is more to the setting, but for brevity's sake, I'll say it was like if Sharp were crossed with the earthy comedy of Holy Grail, further Cronenberg with Annihilation, and finally tempered with the creative fires of Mordheim. If you would like to acquaint yourself further with The Roots, then by all means grab not just a copy of the free rulebook, but also of the Swollen Maglet, which goes into more delicious world-building detail. It has a short story by the actual Josh Reynolds, it's great. On top of that, it also has guides for making the miniatures. Turnip 28 is, after all, a toy soldier game. 
your own toy soldiers will represent one of this horrible world's regiments, a group of vaguely like-minded individuals led by a charismatic figurehead. Your guys in lore motivations will probably be vegetable adjacent and will almost always be completely insane. And they will be your guys. Turnip 28's greatest trick is how it leverages creativity with creativity. The art has dictated the setting, the style of the miniatures, and the rules themselves. You are given a focused creative sandbox, a compelling aesthetic, and a style within which to create your own regiment. True to its Blanchetsu roots, Turnip 28 relies on a heavy amount of conversion work to get the appropriate look. Conceptualizing, converting, and then painting the amount of models required for one of the game's regiments is a creative journey. And from my experience currently doing it myself, it is one of just the right length. Turnip 28 is at the scale between skirmish and full-on wargame colloquially what is referred to as platoon scale. A multi-model unit will be at least 2 and at the most 12 models strong. You'll have 4 of these units in a standard size game, with 3 additional models representing the game's snobby command. There's opportunities for modeling cannons, cavalry, rocket batteries, balloons, crabs, leeches, pigs, stilts, tufts on bases, mustaches, todd, and most importantly, snails. In 2015, I agreed to be part of a study that would have me crouch deep in what was basically wastewater for the better part of two weeks. I agreed to this study because the habitat that I would be studying is a snail habitat. See, I am very fond of snails. They are one of my favorite animals. In 2021, when I first perused the core rulebook of Turnip28, I turned to page 23 and saw the Knights of Shellwood for the first time. I was now a Turnip28 evangelist and I hadn't even played the game. I, I, I really like snails. My beloved snail knights are just one of Turnip28's 15 different cults. Cults are the game's factions and they are responsible for a huge amount of the system's flavor. Cults are your in-lore excuse to go out and model your own personal take on snails, tall men, giant vegetables, mustaches, tufts on bases, stilts, pigs, leeches, crabs, balloons, rockets, cavalry, cannons, and of course, Todd. Now, this would be the point where I start talking about the game itself, but we will save that for when the campaign drops, because that's looking like a big part of the play experience. I have, as of this writing, played 10 games of Turnip 28. Six were played uh, double-fisted, and four with other people. At this point, I have an alright enough understanding of the game to say that it's, it's pretty good. It is messy in the best kind of way. It makes full use of the 4x4 because everything's running away all of the time. Everything is miserable. I love it. Now, that doesn't sound like praise, but given the subject matter of the game, it absolutely is. But we will get to that in the proper review. For now, all I'm going to say is that the guest designer on this game might surprise you. For now, I will leave you with a scenic pan across Robin Carey's procession, one of Turnip 28's many pieces of gorgeous art. I'll leave all the relevant links down below, including the links to the main book and the lore-oriented Swollen Maglet. Do look out for more Turnip28 coverage in the future. This is all from After Editing, and welcome to the end of the video. I really hope I've gotten everyone in the credits roll here. If you were not credited and your art was featured, please let me know. I will amend it in the description. I would like to do a shout out to Max Fitzgerald for a making the game in the first place, it's a lovely game, and B for making suggestions to the video like the thumbnail and the name of the series and using painting footage for b-roll and the intro where I'm putting a tuft onto a model. Those were all his ideas. 
Now this is the first of a series in another style of review separate from my usual long format mechanics facing coverage. I do have a lot of systems that I would like to review and I have acknowledged that not all of them really suit the long format style. As such, I will also be doing short reviews uh, like you've seen for the last few videos, and on occasion I will do reviews in this style for the You Will Not Believe This War Game a series of videos. This kind of video will be reserved for games that do something above and beyond what is standard in the medium. In Turnip 28's case, it is how it has built itself so much of the foundation of art. I will drop another review in this series very soon, and it will be of a game that is quite different from Turnip 28. So you can look forward to that. Thank you very much for watching, until next time.